Good morning and welcome. Good morning. And Pastor Dave, for those that don't know who I am, especially those that are tuning in from outside. Um, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, had a, I was off for a week. Uh, you would, I would call it a staycation, and it was truly a staycation. I stayed home and just, I slept in like every <laughs> single day. Um, I just, it was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. Got to do some things, I did a lot of reading and stuff like that, so it was just wonderful. And then I got to use my snowblower. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, fun. So, and, and then today it's snowing again. So, uh, so I'm excited, I'm, I'm refreshed, I'm excited. Yeah, got to, you know, connect with the Lord some more, which is some needed time for myself, and so it was just great. Um, before we begin our worship services today, I, um, I do have some announcements, but the first uh, announcement I want to make uh, is actually I received a couple of cards, and uh, it's always great to receive thank you cards, and this one here um, is kind of cool, it's got a little butterfly on it. Uh, this one came from Chaplain Debbie. Um, she says, uh, uh, Dear um, Rockwood First Congregational Church, she was uh, regarding the donated socks of her program, and she wanted to let us know that all the facilities that received those socks, and it was the Cherry Hill Nursing Rehab in Westland, uh, the Pro Medica in Canton, and of course the Rivergate Terrace in Southgate, and she said, God bless to all those that um, 
we're part of that ministry. You're, you're a part of her ministry for all those donations. And she's, you know, and she said in Christ's service and, and so in love. So it's just really good to see this. I will make sure we put this on a, in our, in our artifacts on the bulletin board. I also have another one that I received. And it says, uh, thoughtfulness is a blessing. And uh, it is the time of the year to be grateful for people who bless our lives, people like you. And this one here says, to all the ladies uh, of the church. And it says, thank you um, for the gift bags. So well, there's there were two people that received the gift bags and they shared a card. Isn't that nice? They shared a card. And they said, uh, and they, they were thankful that you sent them to them and they were uh, gratefully appreciated and have blessed, uh, have a blessed day. And I can say this, that both of them shared with me kind of personally, um, well, not personally, but shared with me that they have never had a prayer box in their lives. And they put prayers in there. It's just, he said they were calling me and telling me how excited that, that these prayers were being answered. How these prayers were being answered. So, you know, you connected them in, a, in many ways to a, a certain way of praying, which I think is very, very wonderful. And this was from Linda Rail and uh, my mother, Donna, Dana Poma. So, um, so I just wanted to share that, put that card, those cards up on in the narthex. Um, we have our bottle and can fundraiser going on. Uh, we will reconvene uh, as far as the plans, hopefully in February when all these numbers start to settle down. Uh, as you know, a lot of our activities were, were kind of um, postponed because of what we were seeing and, and the number of cases that we were seeing within our congregation. And but the one thing that we were really strong about is making sure that we did our worship services here live at the church and we're doing that. Um, we're hoping to get a lot, jumpstart a lot of those activities hopefully here in February and March. Um, also, our Rockwood Pantry will be open tomorrow and uh, that will be on Monday, um, January 31st. It will be from 1 to 3. Uh, again, our pantry, as we all know, it caters to uh, the top 10 toiletry items um, that people are in need of. But we also have a lot of canned foods. So we have a lot of canned foods, a lot of different miscellaneous items that we put out for those that are in need. Uh, we are constantly getting phone calls for people in need. Uh, matter of fact, Wayne passed to me today that we had somebody message the church about um, couldn't attend but wanted to know if um, they could get some support and help and absolutely Wayne let them know that so it's open all the time but it's just that one day that we have per month that we open it up to you know maybe meet people where they can come and, and visit so um, so we'll continue to do that and it's uh, it's, it's I, I think it's exciting that you know we're about lifting people up you know when they they, they can't seem to find the help that they need, they feel comfortable enough to call to be lifted up and know that they will not be judged by us whatsoever. We don't judge them. All we want to do is lift them up in Christ and help them connect with Christ. So I think it's wonderful that we're doing that. It's time for us now to revive our hearts, revive our minds, prepare our souls. You know, God knows us. God knows us. God loves us. God knit us together in our mother's womb. Let us sink into God's arms, God's arms of love this day, trusting that his hand is holding us up, holding us up and leading us. As we sing our first hymn, Lord, I need you.
Please join me in the call to worship, the invocation, and the Lord's Prayer. In the Lord, we take refuge from our fears and troubles. Help us, O Lord. We feel besieged everywhere, and we don't think anyone cares about us. Listen to us, Lord, and deliver us. The Lord is our hope and our trust. The Lord will heal and guide us. We do not need to fear. Amen. Wrap us in the arms of your love, Holy One, for we need to feel your healing touch. As we gather to worship you this day, humble our hearts, teach us patience, and touch us with kindness. Open our eyes that we may see ourselves as you see us. Open our hearts to your spirit of gentleness, that our words may be true and our love may be pure. Find us in a love that does not fail or fade, that we may bear all things, believe all things, and hope all things in your love, which never ends. Amen. It was Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us uh, ready our hearts, our minds, clear out all the clutter that hinders us. And let us pray to our God this day. Let us pray. Oh Lord, if we go out into the world speaking to others as your disciples, but if we do not have love, we are like a noisy clanging cymbal. If we have wonderful visions to see all the great possibilities you have provided for us to serve, and if we do not have love in our hearts or in our actions, we fall short. We fall short of our covenant promises to serve you. Lord, you are love. In you, we can find hope. In you, we can find peace and justice. In you, we can find comfort and compassion. In you, we find love. You have poured your love into us and all creation from before the beginning of time. Remind us again of your great invitation of lifting up our burdens of lifting up our fears and our doubts. It is your yoke that brings us new life, a life with purpose. Today, Lord, we bring before you the names of people who are in dire need, as well as those who are on our prayer list. We pray for your healing hand to touch them all, to reconcile their relationships, to take their impossibilities and turn them into possibilities. Today, we pray again for your protection from this COVID virus that has touched so many people in our families and in our lives. 
We also pray again for our healthcare workers and first responders. Give them the strength and the courage to help those who are in need. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. At this time, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with all those who are viewing this service here in our sanctuary and those who are at home. Bring us to you. Cleanse our spirits, transform our ways, look into our hearts as we lift up our prayers to you now in silence. Lord, we thank you, we love you, and we praise you for the things that you've done in our lives. Give us courage to be your faithful disciples by the kinds of loving service and care we give to others. As we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. jar is full, half full, or empty, whether your gifts seem like they're mighty or insignificant or small, they are gifts to be treasured and shared, just as we are gifts to be treasured and shared with others around us. Let us share our gifts. Let us share our time and our service and our talent to help with the mission and maintenance needs of Christ's church. As Christ's disciples, let us rise and sing together for our Lord the doxology. Spirit 
to be with us once again, to flow through our hearts, to flow through our minds here today. Say it with me, Lord, fill our hearts with your word today. Lord, fill our hearts with your word today. Fill our minds with your wisdom. Fill our minds with your wisdom. Let us, let the Holy Spirit make its home within us as we all rise and sing together our second hymn, Let Him Reign. to burst when you hear that quiet whisper and the fire begins to burn when you know deep down inside you there is something you must do let the Holy Spirit make his home in you let him rest because I think this to me is, this is definitely God at work, okay? Most definitely God at work. Not too often do I get an email on Christmas Day at six o'clock. And it came from Emily Dodd. 
You know, and to me, it's like, okay, the Holy Spirit's definitely working here. This is like a gift. It's a gift from God today. And Emily writes to me and she says, you know, if you ever have a Sunday that um, you need someone to speak or give a message, she said that the Holy Spirit had touched her on Christmas, the Christmas week, okay? And it, it really touched her. It touched her so much that she wrote all kinds of a message, a message that is going to be shared with you today because of the Holy Spirit had, had put this in on her heart and it put it on her mind. And to me, it's always great to be able to bring someone up to witness on how the Holy Spirit, how God's working in their life. And so I'm going to uh, ask Emily Daddy to come up today and give the message what it is, which is called Walking in God's Embrace. Thank you, Pastor Dave, for allowing me to share this word from the Holy Spirit. Not too long ago, I bought a cheap product in the hopes of eliminating my age spots, even though I was skeptical of its effectiveness. And uh, I was looking for something cheap because I can only afford so much. And you know how that goes. You buy a cheap skin product and you don't really expect it to do any good. It's a good thing that we don't have to base our relationship with God on affordability or worry that spiritual faith is a waste. It's like, it's not like we're offered three or four different levels of relationship with God based on different pricing. What does it cost to have a loving, lifelong, intimate, spiritual relationship with God? Nothing. It costs nothing for us to embrace God's unconditional love. However, we tend to think it does cost us something. Some of our pride, self-certainty, maybe dogged independence, because we might initially think we don't need God. We might think, you know, maybe perhaps we thought this when we were younger. Maybe uh, we thought that maybe God was too busy with other people's problems. And then when life brought us low, we might have initially gotten angry with God, basing our relationship on resentment. I didn't bother you when my life was fine, but now that I need you, where are you? Or, we might have felt that God's unconditional love would cost us our narrow-mindedness or skepticism. We might feel too intelligent, too wise, too street smart, to believe in some fluffy, soul-saving deity as if God were some kind of placebo until life brought us low and we really needed something genuine and soul-saving to grasp onto. But God does not charge us these fees of pride, self-certainty, dogged independence, narrow-mindedness, skepticism, or desperation. We assign these costs to God's unconditional love. We think of God as being so ominous, super remote, ultra unique, confoundingly mysterious, totally judgmental, or so not even likely to exist that we think it's a gamble to even dare to risk to try having a sort of a shallow, temporary relationship with God. If we spend that much uncertainty on an insufficient relationship with God, how much more do we think it costs to have a spiritually mature, close, truly loving relationship with our Creator, Sustainer, Redeemer. Just think of all the things we'll have to give up for God. Our bad habits, mean-spiritedness, our anger, our frustration, 
grief, guilt, shame, fears. Too much to give up. To have a really good relationship with God, we must have to be saintly. Nope. That's Satan talking. Jesus said, let the children come to me. Are children saintly? Often not. Children lie, fight with each other, have temper tantrums over petty things. Children can be grabby, impatient, greedy, and self-centered. But all Jesus asked was to have the children come to him just as they were. In doing this, Jesus demonstrated exactly how God welcomes us completely, free of charge, 100% infinite guarantee, full permanent warranty, no subscription fees, no renewal charges. Because the fact is, God has always loved us unconditionally and always will. It's only a matter of when and how completely we surrender to God's embrace. How can we wrap our limited human brains around that? Not having to pay anything to build a strong, loving, permanent, intimate relationship with the creator of all existence? What might be holding you back from walking into God's arms? Surrendering to God's agape doesn't mean that we can keep all of our selfishness and continue sinning with abandon. It means that as our relationship with God strengthens and we grow in trust and faith, we care less and less about self and worldly things and more and more about emulating Jesus by loving people, even those who are difficult to love, by being kind, even when it requires a lot of patience and emotional control. It means switching focus from ourselves to all of God's other creations, stepping outside our comfort zones, to accept work that God may send us to do, to touch lives in ways that bring hope, opportunity, and healing to those who are vulnerable or despondent. A wholehearted relationship with God is not oppositional, but surrendering. When God suggests we do thus and so, do we deliberately turn away and do the opposite? Well, maybe we're tempted to. But because God loves us unconditionally, we step out in faith, hand in our useless worldliness, hand over our ragtag selfishness in exchange for a new wardrobe that's born on the inside, the Holy Spirit, giving us the fortitude to take on the task God is entrusting to us. What if our loving God says, in exchange for your obstacles, your self-imposed obstacles, and harmful baggage, I'll give you fine qualities. Are you the hoarder that says, uh-uh, I want to keep my self-imposed obstacles and harmful baggage? Or will you reply, God, even in my misery, it does seem safe to keep what I have because it's familiar. And I'm a little bit afraid of, and suspicious of faith. But I'll step forward. I'm willing to work on building a new life centered on you, God. I trust that you will turn me into one of your followers as I gradually surrender to your transforming power. Transformation or rebirth by believing in Christ's redemptive grace rarely happens in an instant. 
it's almost, almost always a lifelong journey, a struggle. But rather than it costing us our best selves, it costs us our garbage, our worst selves. Furthermore, God's unconditional love comes along with extra gifts such as unending companionship with the three natures of God. The father or parent who is the teacher, the son who is the example, and the Holy Spirit who is our advocate. And incidentally, agape, unconditional love, also includes a long string of unexpected kindnesses that occur to buoy us up, even in our worst times. Finally, an additional premium you receive for becoming God's disciple is eternal life in God's kingdom. Well, I'm acquiring more and more age spots because that cheap skin toner stuff didn't work. <laughs> but I've decided that that's okay because over the course of my life, I've also developed a closer relationship with God. So I can say that these age spots show a little bit of, are kind of an example of the number of years that I have spent in close relationship with God, working on letting go of selfishness, impatience, irritability, unnecessary fears, anxiety, as my love for God, my trust in God, faith in God, deepens and strengthens. Scripture study, prayer, efforts to switch out harmful habits for good habits, worshiping God and fellowshipping with all of you, is a challenging and rewarding life that brings me joy as I strive to bring love, kindness, and joy to those whom I encounter. So let's toss our detritus, walk right into God's open arms, and wholeheartedly accept unconditional love. And if this is your first step toward Christian faith, then through scripture study, church participation, prayer, fellowship, and changing habits, let your surrender to God's unconditional love gradually lead you to a whole new life in Christ. Well, I have to say thank you very much, Emily, for that message today. I really think it was It's time for us to rise again. We have been renewed this day. We've been renewed by the Lord's Holy Spirit. We have given God thanks and praise for all the blessings that he has bestowed in our life. We have sung hymns of praise for our Lord this day. We have learned many things from Emily today of God's unconditional love of surrendering, of her message of walking to God's embrace. Let us rise to sing together our closing hymn, which could not be more fitting, I Surrender All.